dealing with loss and in particular dealing with the death or near death of someone you love or care about is extraordinarily difficult. Of all the things in the world that could happen in your life, losing someone or something you really care about has got to be one of the hardest and saddest experiences you will ever face in your life. Having the support of your friends and family can help, but sometimes just being consoled doesn't feel like enough. As I was told recently, it can feel like it's raining, both inside and outside. Uh, my name is David, or some of my friends call me Darby. I'm a 29-year-old doctor in Australia. So I guess I've been in a position where I've had to think way more about the topic than a typical 29 year old because I've had patients who have had cancer, patients who have a year or two to live and situations where the son or daughter of an 80 year old talk to me about someone close to them who sounds very sick. Yet there's a big problem. I'm not religious. If someone does have a religious belief, let's say Christianity, then there is a set of ways to think about life or death that immediately give some form of comfort. Uh, if you think my loved one continues to live on heaven, then you know that's something where they can feel much more acceptance of someone's death. But I'm not Christian. In fact, I technically do not have any religious beliefs. There are a lot of people like me too, maybe you. Regardless of whether you're religious or not though, the question is, if you don't believe in the afterlife or you have to talk to someone who doesn't believe in the afterlife, how do you or we make sense of someone's passing away? This video is about life and death. And in particular, I want to talk about a book that is extraordinarily useful in thinking about this. This book is called The Art of Living. It's by a Buddhist monk, Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, I think. He has actually passed away fairly recently. The concepts in this video I find are extraordinarily helpful in both thinking about what life is and what death is. It does use a lot of Buddhist concepts that are abstract, but I'll try to explain things uh, the best way I can, and you don't have to believe in Buddha or anything like that to understand them. I hope to make this video comprehensive enough and easy to follow, and I'm going to interweave a lot of direct quotes from the book into what I say here too, so if you read the book, you'll find a lot of the words are going to be the same. In the end, if you watch this whole video, I feel like you'll be able to deal with the loss of a loved one because you'll come to understand how they live on within our hearts. And I don't mean that as just a poetic turn of phrase, but as a reality of this world. The first concept is the concept of emptiness. If you look at a flower, some people might just see a flower. They see the petals, they see the green stem, it's a flower. <laughs> but actually, when you look even closer, you see that the flower is full of life. It contains soil, rain, sunshine. It's full of clouds and oceans and minerals. It's full of space and time. In fact, everything that exists, exists in this one flower. But the flower itself, what is it that makes up a flower? I've said a bunch of things that's in it, but none of these things themselves can be called a flower. Take any one of them away and you can no longer call it a flower. The flower therefore cannot exist by itself alone. It is empty of a separate self-existence. We're pretty similar to flowers. I often joke with people that I am 30% chicken because I eat a lot of chicken and the proteins from the chickens have become part of my muscles and unfortunately, you know, for the entire chicken species, I am not a vegetarian. <laughs> but for us humans, we contain earth, water, air, sunlight. We also contain space and consciousness. Our ancestry is also a part of us. Our education, our food, our culture. Remove anything and we are no longer us. When Thich Nhat Hanh talks about the concept of emptiness, he says that being empty does not mean nothingness. It doesn't mean that we don't exist. So for, for example, we can say a cup is empty, but the cup must exist in the first place for there to be emptiness of the cup. So everything that we are made up of is stuff that isn't ourselves. We are made up of non-self stuff. We are, there's no discrete permanent self. But even if you understand that you are lots of non-self stuff that's not actually a self, what does that have to do with the loss of a loved one? Well, let's say you look at a child. In the child, you can see the child's mother and father, grandmother, grandfather, in her, the way she looks, the way she acts, the things she says. So with a the child, they are a continuation. When she walks and talks, her ancestors are walking and talking as well. You see 
all these wonderful elements coming together because, and this is really important, we as a person do not exist independently. When you look at your hand, it's the hand of your mum and dad. When you do something differently because someone else existed in your life, that is them living through you. It's tempting and conceptually easier to understand people as physical beings. The usual view is when the person you care about is walking and talking in front of you, surely they're alive, uh, you might think. And when they stop, then they pass away. But to die is to stop existing. Yet you remember them. You hear their voice, your actions change, you do something because of something they said once. So even if someone physically passes away, they still have a life of their own within your life. I think you understand this more intuitively when you're reading a book of someone who's physically passed away or watching the video of someone who's passed away. Hopefully not this video. <laughs> um, when you're reading it or watching it or listening to the music that someone played before they were gone, it's that moment like you don't feel as if they're dead. You feel like they're alive when you're watching those things. There's a funny anecdote from the book where Thich Nhat Hanh is talking to an elderly Anglican woman. She believed that once she died, she would then be reunited with her husband who died when he was 33 years old. So Thich Nhat Hanh said, after you die and go to heaven and meet your husband again, will he be, will he be 33 or 70 or 80? And how old will you be? It would be strange for you over 70 to meet him at 33. This story is to illustrate the concept of interbeing. This concept that we are always with one another, even if not physically. You don't need to wait till you die to meet someone in heaven because they are always right here with us. The first law of thermodynamics is the law of the conservation of energy. In it, nothing can be created or destroyed, that's just physics. It can only be transformed. So it's not scientific to believe that after our body decomposes, we become nothing because you know, at the very least we become ash and stuff. But if you understand that our life is more than just our physical life, when we are alive, our life is actually energy. And after death, it continues to be energy. That energy is continually changing and transforming and can never be lost. If we've lost someone who is very close to us and we're grieving, then it's important to look into ourselves deeply and see that our loved one is still alive within us and around us. They are real, we haven't lost them. It's still possible to recognize them. They will be in a different form, uh, perhaps even in a more beautiful form than they have been in the past, and certainly in a form that you won't be used to, but they are still there. You can still talk to them, you can still say something like, I know you are there, I'm smiling for you, I know you are still there very close to me, and that now you continue, but in me. I want to talk about signlessness, which is another concept that greatly helps with understanding the nature of life and death. The easiest way to understand this is to think about clouds. When a cloud becomes rain, we don't say that the cloud dies. It's still H2O. A cloud becoming rain is simply a transformation. Rain becoming the ocean is also a transformation. So as people, <laughs> we often get stuck into having to describe things as clouds or rain or alive or dead, but even born and reborn. It's definitely weird to say that when rain appears from a cloud though, the rain is born and the cloud has died. We just don't tend to say that. So in understanding what I was saying before about nothing being lost, about people living on uh, within us, it requires the realization that we need to let go of some of the prior notions of what it means to be alive. Obviously, the person you love is not literally living in you like a human babushka doll. <laughs> but rather, if someone were to ask the question, what happens when I die? The short answer is that you don't die. Uh, in the same way that a cloud doesn't die when it becomes rain. They are all one and the same, and they are a continuation of each other. There is no, and this is a pretty radical concept, but there is no such thing as death because death is kind of this arbitrary sign that we've created to understand people as they stop walking and talking and breathing. But the reality is that the true nature of death 
is that there is no such thing as death. There is only transformation from one thing to another, like a cloud becoming the rain, becoming the ocean. So we need to let go of those signs that we have, and that helps us understand the nature of reality a lot better. Now, something else that is really helpful that I want to talk about briefly, which is from a different book called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Uh, he was a Roman emperor many centuries ago. Sometimes we may feel that someone's life was too short. Perhaps they passed away at five years old. Perhaps they passed away at 70 years old. But the thing is, we, first of all, we don't own the past. The past is already gone. And we don't own the future either because the future is not ours. So when people die, Everyone loses exactly the same thing, which is the present, and it doesn't matter how old you are, it's always the same. That can help you understand that if someone dies young, then you know we've really lost the same thing. I want to talk about guilt for a second. I think it's often tempting to feel as if we've had more that we could have said to a person before they passed away, that we wanted to tell them something before they died, or to visit them, or to change how we behave towards them, but you've actually got to think about it from the perspective of the person who's died. When you yourself die, I can imagine, you'd be thinking, mm, I hope the person that I care about who's thinking about me, I still hope that they live a good life, and that they're happy, and that they, you know, maybe remember me sometimes. So, so similarly, while you may have regrets about certain things you did or didn't do, it's important to realize that the person who passed away probably doesn't want you to feel the weight of that regret. It's okay to feel guilty for a little while if you want, um, but I'm sure the last thing that that person who you care about would want is to see you consumed by guilt. I want to tell you one last story about death. I used to work in a hospital where the emergency department would refer cases to me to admit the patients uh, into hospital. And I remember seeing this man who was almost comatose, but clearly breathing and clearly still alive, but also clearly very unwell. I was talking to the wife of this man, asking him the usual questions like how long has he had cancer for, who's his oncologist, what other medical conditions does he have, what were his symptoms, and he looked like he was gasping for air a bit, and he looked like he was in pain though. So I went to the nurse and I said, oh, could you um, get this man some painkillers and I'll be right back. So I went to see a few other patients, but about two minutes later, the nurse came back to me and she said, he doesn't need morphine anymore. So I understood immediately that he was gone. I went into the room, he had no pulse, and there was something that really, really struck me about that experience. In a movie, when you think about someone dying, you think about there being dramatic music. You, you know, there's gentle piano, there's violins playing, there's, um, there's like zooms and pan shots and everything. It's all pretty dramatic. But in real life, when someone passes away, there is no fanfare whatsoever. His wife was sitting at his bedside crying, of course. But what struck me was this sense of silence. It's just. You know, it just seemed like an ordinary hospital room. There was no music, there was no fanfare. It was just someone passing away. And really, passing, it was just the next moment arriving. I have no doubt that if you're losing or have lost a loved one, you're feeling a whole range of things right now. I just want to say that I hope something I've been able to offer has maybe helped a little. My main message though, I my mean, message of all messages is simply that the person you care about is still with you in another sense, but still with you. And also they will always be with you for as long as you live. So their life may not be the same life that you're used to, and they likely won't be in the same form that exists in your memories and in your history. But just by virtue of you thinking about them, they're still with you and they continue to live on in a different way. Uh, life is a beautiful thing, short lived in our physical form, but we are always connected to each other in our eternal non-physical form as energy. A cloud doesn't die, a cloud becomes rain, and then that rain becomes the ocean, and then we continue to live on in that sense. We don't die, we just transform into something else, and you know, that's another beautiful way to continue to live life. It's a new way in which their life will continue on. And you don't have to believe in heaven, you don't have to believe in God, you don't even have to believe in Buddha. It's just you can feel it and you can sense their life in your own life. So you make sure that you take care. This is David and 
if for some reason, for whatever reason, someone plays this video at my funeral or whatever, then tell them to like and subscribe. <laughs> I'll get subs after death. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. But like, um, <laughs> just joking. Be happy. And let's continue to live through this beautiful life of ours. Bye-bye.